Perry Giesbrecht. I work as a financial consultant at Investors Group. Investors Group is a Canadian company all across Canada and we are financial planners. So what we do is we work with individuals to help them with their financial goals, uh, maybe some concerns and solve financial problems. So a lot of what we do here is listed. So things like wealth management and investing, um, personal insurance, mortgages, tax planning, and retirement planning, things like that. So today we'll speak mostly about uh, taxes and towards the end of the presentation there's some important um, government programs where you can actually uh, make the most of your money um, with uh, what's called a tax-free savings account, retirement savings plans, and education savings plans that the government actually puts in place to help you guys grow your savings, okay? So to get started, Time, not money, is your biggest asset in life. You need time to invest in relationships or to chase your passion. Let your money work for you. You don't work for money. That's exactly what financial freedom is. I start with a quote like this because I firmly believe that with a proper plan in place, your money can actually do things for you, can actually work for you. That's a lot of what I talk about with my clients. Um, we can talk about that more after. In Canada, your, the tax system is a self-assessed tax system, which means we need to report to the government uh, things like our income for the year. So from January to December, we need to report our income. We also need to report how much tax has been taken off from our employment. We need to report all of this back to the government, so we need a way to keep all of this information throughout the year then we can submit some of this information that we call a tax return. When we file our taxes, we call it a tax return, and we're right in that season right now where people are starting to get some of this information from their taxes last year, okay? So 2013 just ended in December, and all this reporting comes out from employers and businesses, and they say, how much did you make from your job, from your investments, from your property, from your business, all of these different things? And we report that to the government around this time of year, okay? So this is, we call this tax season. We're just heading into it, uh, you know, February, March, April. Those months are when people are getting their tax information together and submitting that to the government, okay? So each person is responsible to file your own tax return, we call it. And I want to stress this, that I want everyone to think of a place where they keep important documents. Um, you're going to be... Um, you know, taking advantage of them, some things throughout the year, some benefits. You're going to be uh, spending money on things that you might actually get some taxes back. But it's up to you to keep track of these things. So we'll go over a number of them today. But I want you guys to think of a place where you can maintain some of these receipts, some of these files, important papers that you want to have together so that when it is tax time next year, we have all our information together and we can do our taxes properly. Okay, or like most Canadians, we're going to take this information to an accountant and they're going to process our tax return for us. Okay, most people do that. If you're, does anyone have an accounting background or a financial background? Yeah, so maybe you guys are familiar with processing your own taxes from your home countries, maybe a little bit. Yeah, okay, so some people do that here in Canada as well. Um, but a large number of people will either use a program on the computer so they can do it online from home or they will take their taxes to an accountant and they will have them processed for them. Okay? Good. Okay, so taxes are used for a number of different things. This probably isn't uh, brand new information, but you know, things like building roads and paying for schools, healthcare, which is a really good thing in Canada, they're going to cover that. Social Security, this would be for um, when you retire, you'd actually receive pension income from Canada. Now, that's based on a couple of different things. It's based on how long you have worked in Canada and what your income has been while, during those working years. Okay, so think about this. If you're going to retire at age 65 and you've been working in Canada for 40 years and had a really good income, you're going to have a really good retirement pension from the government of Canada. Okay? It may not be enough to meet all of your needs, but you might be able to receive the maximum amount. 
But if you've only lived in Canada a short time before you retire, maybe six or 10 years, maybe you didn't make a lot of money during those years, you're now gonna receive a small amount from the government in retirement, okay? So it's based on how much money you can make over a period of time before you retire. That's Social Security, or we call it CPP, which is the Canadian Pension Plan, okay? So far so good? Yeah. Wonderful, you guys are a great crowd. Um, public safety, things like firefighters, police, things like that, uh, also for taxes. Some of the big benefits that we'll talk about are programs that are put in place or ways that people can um, save money on their taxes. They receive tax credits, they receive tax refunds. Um, some things are tax exempt. And a lot of these are listed here. So students, um, anyone planning to go to university, college, University of Winnipeg, Manitoba, yeah. So if you're enrolled in full-time school, you can receive uh, a large number of tax credits um, based on the tuition that you paid. You can receive some of that tax back on that, okay? That's a program that Canada puts in place to encourage you to go to school and get an education, okay? School is not cheap. It costs a lot of money, but we want that for Canada to improve your education so you can get good jobs, improve the economy, and this is all very good, right? Good for your family and everything like that. Uh, seniors as well can receive an old age credit or an old age pension. Uh, there's some benefits put in place for lower income families. I won't get into all of the details of exactly what the numbers are, but uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. And persons with disabilities as well. That's a, a large tax credit. So that could be a physical disability. That could be a mental disability as well. Um, so if there is a disabled person, hearing loss, eyesight, uh, physical impairment, um, something like that, you can actually receive a disability tax credit. And this actually can save you a huge dollar amount in your taxes. And it also opens up some other government programs for helping people with disabilities to save for retirement because maybe they have trouble finding a job. So there's different programs in place that help you know, these people um, thrive and succeed in Canada, okay? All right, so just a recap, uh, who should file? So everyone that is a resident of Canada, you must file if you owe the government money or if you would like a refund on your taxes. Now the question is, how do we know if we owe the government money or if we get a refund, right? So in order to figure that out, we need to file that tax return and report all of our income and report how much taxes our employer took off from us, uh, from our pay. And the government will do a calculation that helps us figure out exactly how much tax we should be paying. And then they send us back a statement that says, you either get a refund, which is good, or you have to pay, which is not so good, okay? But it's, it's designed to be fair. Okay, any questions about that? No? All right. Uh, next point there, everyone should file so everyone should file to receive the GST credit. This is a credit that you can begin to receive immediately. Uh, even if you have not worked in Canada, you can file a tax return saying that you had no income. As a newcomer, you can file a special newcomer tax return. And really it just says, I'm here, I didn't work yet, or maybe I've worked a little bit. I'm a newcomer and it's a very basic, quick process, but it needs to be on record and on file with Canada Revenue Agency, which is the governing body for all of the tax collections in Canada. Once you're registered on file there, you can apply for a GST credit. Now, GST, are we familiar with GST? Have we seen this before? No. no. Have you made a purchase before in Canada? Have you looked at your receipt? Ever wonder why when you make a purchase for something that costs $10, you end up paying like $12 for it, $13 for it? Okay, there's some taxes at the bottom of your receipt. There's two that we're gonna talk about. So GST is a goods and services tax. This is across all of Canada. Every province has this tax and it's applied to almost everything, okay? The other one that you might see is a provincial sales tax and that's just for Manitoba, because we're special. And so the two of them together, you know, gets added onto your bill and all of a sudden you see that you had to pay more than what the price was listed, right? So those prices don't include the taxes that you pay, okay? 
If you're running a business, it's your job to pay taxes to the government based on how much money you bring in. So those businesses have to charge us customers for those things that we're purchasing. Okay. The GST credit is for um, lower income families and it can range. I'll show you in a little bit. There's a range of what you could get. That's a, that's a credit that gets paid back to you. It's a check that you would receive in the mail four times a year. Okay. My wife and I used to receive that credit. It was great. We saw the envelope in the mail. It was a brown envelope that said Canada Revenue Agency. We knew exactly what that was. We're like, woohoo, we got our check. Checks in the mail, right? So that was our GST credit. It happened every four, uh, every four months, and, or every three months, pardon me. And then one day we realized, hey, we haven't received that check in a little while. What, what, what happened? We like to receive this check. All of a sudden, the government stopped sending us this check. And why do you think that was? We had income that had increased and we had reported that income and we had, we were doing better, making more money and then the government says, okay, you're making enough money, you're okay, you don't need this credit anymore, okay? So everyone can apply for this credit. I would say everyone should apply for this credit, right? There's nothing you have to do except live in Canada to receive that money, okay? Okay. Everyone with children, who here has kids? I do. Good. Uh, how many how many have um, children under the age of six? How many have two children under the age of six? Keep your hands up. Two? And anyone have three children under the age of six? Okay. I, I'd say you know, good luck to you if you did, but that would be difficult, right? <laughs> so there's a there's a child tax benefit, which is a really good benefit that you can receive monthly uh, for children uh, under the age of six. And you need to continue to file your taxes with the government and keep on applying for that tax credit. Otherwise, you won't receive it. So, to answer your question, what happens if we don't file? We may not receive this credit anymore. We may not receive this money anymore. If you forget and you missed your taxes and you're wondering, hey, he was talking about getting some free money. If you haven't filed, you're not going to get that. Okay? So there's some good benefits there. All right, so your taxes are based on your residency. As residents of Canada, pay taxes on all sources, including income earned from outside of Canada. Does anyone have um, business income or investment income that they are receiving from outside of Canada? Business income, investment income, sale of property income, anything like that? Yeah. So we have to report to the government in Canadian dollars the income that we are earning from another country while we live in Canada. Okay, does anyone have any questions here? This is usually where there's a lot of questions. Why? Why? Yeah. Because That's my money that I'm getting offshore from another country, not Canada. Welcome to Canada. So you get taxed on all of your income. And it doesn't matter where you make it. We want to make sure that the taxes were paid for that income. Now, some of you may have already been taxed in your home country. And that's why each country has a tax treaty with Canada. So there's some different rules that make sure that it's fair and that you're not being taxed twice or there's no double taxation. So there's an agreement between Canada and different countries to make sure that the correct amount of tax has been paid. Okay. Uh, generally, all income must be reported on your tax return. Your tax return is how you report income and benefits to the government. And taxes are not the same in every province. Remember we talked about the provincial sales tax and the general sales tax, or the goods and services sales tax? Uh, so each province has some different tax rules, and it's based on where you lived on December 31st. So this is a, an interesting scenario. What if you, you live in Winnipeg right now, and on December 30th of this year, you decide you're going to move to British Columbia. Okay? Out west. <laughs> so if you now live in British Columbia on December 31st, you're now going to pay the taxes for the whole year based on British Columbia's taxes because that's where you lived on December 31st. Okay? So maybe you want to move in January. Maybe you want to move earlier depending on what the taxes are. Just a... Interesting little rule. You don't have to memorize this stuff. 
employer responsibilities. So I go over this just to kind of give you an idea of what, what's the role of the employer to do when it comes to taxes. We talked about each individual reporting their own taxes. The employer is responsible for paying federal and provincial taxes, just like any business. So your pay statement or your check or whatever you receive from your employer may include or will include employment insurance, okay, for people that work for a period of time and maybe get laid off for a period of time because of um, weather or no demand in the job. They're not, they're not fired from their job. They're laid off for a period of time. They can collect employment insurance. CPP, we talked about, Canada Pension Plan. So everyone working in Canada is paying into this pension plan for Canada. Okay, so I am supporting people in retirement because I'm paying into the pension plan. This is a good thing. I don't like seeing the deduction on my check, right? But I like knowing that when I retire, there's going to be some money there because everyone's paying into this pension plan. I think that's a good thing for Canada, okay? Same thing with healthcare too. I don't like paying high taxes. I don't think any of you like paying high taxes. But when I have stitches or when I bring my baby home from the hospital and I didn't sign for any bills, I didn't pay for anything to do that, I think that's a pretty good thing. Do you agree? Yes. Go Canada. All right. Uh, you may also see other deductions. So um, some benefits your employer might uh, provide for you, uh, union fees, membership fees, things like that. The employer keeps a record of all of the money that they've paid to you and all of the taxes that you've paid through your social insurance number. Maybe you've heard about that. So when you have employment, you, you use your social insurance number so they can track that information. And at the end of the year, they're gonna issue um, a statement, often a T4 statement is what it's called. And that summarizes all of the income paid from that employer, okay? And it also tells what the taxes were taken off from that employer. Now, some employers may be taking off a little bit too much tax than what's required. If that's the case for you, when you file your taxes, you should expect a refund. Some employers may not have it set up properly and take off a little bit too little taxes. Then you might find out that you have to pay a little bit more when you file your tax return, okay? What if you had two jobs? One employer takes off a certain amount of tax over here. The other employer takes off a certain amount of tax over here. But when you look at the putting them together, it may mean that you have to pay more taxes, that they weren't taking off enough because they don't know how much you're making at the other job. So we put all that information together, submit that to the government, they do a fancy calculation and figure out our taxes. Okay? All of um, all the information that I go to whenever I can't answer a question is through the CRA website. So I'll just put that up here. And you won't be able to read that on the camera maybe, I don't know. Uh, cra.gc.ca that's a Canada Revenue Agency if you've never been to that website you need to it has every bit of information on regulations on all sorts of uh, newcomer information all sorts of uh, tax credits every thing about employment insurance this is really detailed information and there's tons of it so there's even some really great videos on there as well um, so maybe mine will be up there, you know, one day, who knows. Um, but uh, lots of good resources there and there's a great search tool. So if I can't answer your question, that's where I would go to look for the information. So you guys can go there too. Uh, that's a great website. All right. So we talked about this already. Um, always file a tax return even if you have no income. It's important so that you can receive the GST credit and the child tax benefit. Okay. Um, there are penalties and interest charges on overdue taxes. So, in our case here, again, if we don't file our taxes and we owed the government money that year, they're going to charge us, number one, a penalty for being late. And then because we owed the money, guess what? They're going to charge us interest on that. Okay? However, it does not work the other way around. If the government owes me money, and I decide not to file my taxes, what do you think happens? The money's gone. It's not gone, but they won't pay it until I've, oh, yeah. until I've filed my taxes and 
essentially requested it. So the government is very happy to keep that money with them until I ask for it back. So it is important to file for those reasons as well. Uh, you have a deadline of April 30th to file your taxes from the previous year. Okay? Uh, if you're self-employed, you can pay your taxes by June 15th. However, all that information needs to be submitted by April 30th. And there's the penalty there. So we don't want to be late. Uh, touched on this a little bit. World income. So this is if you are living in Canada but generating an income source from outside of Canada. This needs to be reported in Canadian dollars. So this is reported as your income. Um, it, uh, when you came to Canada, you uh, declared what you were bringing to Canada, what your assets were and things like that. Um, it, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about if you continue to generate income, earned income. If somebody were to send you money, family members or friends were to send you money, we call that a gift. That's like a present. A present of money, that's the best kind of present there can be, right? So a gift is not going to be taxable. So if we have a business that earns income for us, we need to claim that. If someone sends us money, that's different. That's a gift. Okay? All right. So different sources of income, just so that we're all clear on what all these sources of income are. We're going to have employment income from our jobs. If we have a business, that can claim business income. We could be receiving investment income. So this is a big part of what I do for investment income. Pension income, figuring out um, if we're receiving a pension from our employer, um, you know, maybe a teacher or somebody works for the city, something like that may have a good pension that they're receiving. And capital gains. Capital gains are when we've bought something at one price and we sell it at a higher price. That's a capital gain. That's taxable. We have to pay tax on that growth, on that profit. So all investment income is taxable but it's not all taxed the same way. And so um, if I can help people you know, pay as little tax as they need to based on how they're investing their income or investing their money, that's the kinds of things that I would work to help people with in terms of tax planning. Okay. Great picture there. Okay, <clears throat> let's take a deep breath, everyone. We're gonna just talk numbers for a little while. You okay with that? This is, the, this, is like the, the, this is the most exciting part of this. All right, so we're going to talk about what we call marginal tax rates. Or sometimes we call them tax brackets. And it has to do with your own individual income for the calendar year. So January 1st to December 31st based on you. Not your household, just you. So what we're looking at here is federal marginal tax rates. So this is for all of Canada. Everyone pays this everywhere. If your income is between zero and $43,561, you're going to be taxed 15% on that by the federal government. Okay? Everyone okay with that? Yes. Everyone happy about that? So the difference here is, I think some people have the idea that, well, I don't want to get a raise because if I get a raise, I'm going to have to pay more tax, right? Right? People in Canada think that, and I'm going to tell you that's false. If you pay more in taxes, guess what? You're making more money. That's okay. In my books, that's okay. If I have, to, if I have a tax problem, if I'm, oh man, my goodness, my taxes are so high, guess what? I'm making good money. You know what? I'll, I'll be okay with that. Okay? This is how it works, though 15% on this number or less. But what if we make $1 more? that one dollar falls into this bracket here. So that one dollar gets taxed at 22 percent. The rest of it is still here and gets taxed at 15. Let that soak in for a little bit. Okay? Because what if we make more than this amount here? I mean, that would be very good. That would be very high. If we made more than that, that amount that's over 135,054 gets taxed at 29. The amount that sits between here and here gets taxed at 26. The amount between here and here gets taxed at 22. And the first 43 always gets taxed at 15. So now what about the, what about the province of Manitoba? 
we have our own tax rates, our own tax brackets. And you know what? They don't match with the other ones. There's not even the same number of tax brackets, and everything's different. Okay? So in the province of Manitoba, there's some different tax brackets, but it works the same way. If we make that $1 extra, more than 31000 that extra dollar falls into here and gets taxed at the higher rate. Not the first part, but just the extra part. Okay? So when we put everything together, we have this lovely mash of tax rates, and it ends up there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different <laughs> tax brackets if you live in Manitoba when you combine them all together, okay? You're taxed twice, right? You're taxed from the province and you're taxed from the federal government. May I remind you, I didn't have to pay anything to take my baby home from the hospital. <laughs> my wife was administered many, many, many drugs that we did not have to pay for. Okay, obviously there's some, some services that we receive from those taxes, but yes. How many of you look at this and say, wow, taxes are high in Canada? I do. Anyone else think they're high? Yeah. yeah they're high. Sure. But I enjoy the benefits that I receive from our taxes. And from conversations I've had with other newcomers, I know that my taxes are being used to clear the snow out of my street, to pick up the garbage, you know, clean water, stuff like that. So I enjoy those benefits, which means I'm okay with paying some taxes. Okay? But I'm not okay with paying any more than I have to. Right? Okay. Um, we'll talk about some ways that we can receive tax deductions. Perry, how do we lower our taxes? Well, there's some things that we can take advantage of. So some deductions might be childcare expenses. So if our children are in daycare, um, that cost for daycare for the year, we would want to keep the receipt that says how much we paid for our childcare, and then we can use that receipt to get a tax deduction for that. Okay, that's another program of how you can save money on taxes. Spousal support payments. Is anyone planning to get divorced here? No? Okay, Nobody, I don't think anyone plans to, right? But if we have to pay spousal support payments, you can receive a tax deduction. And moving expenses. So, if you hire a company to move your stuff from Winnipeg to wherever, it could be down the street, it could be another city in Manitoba, it could be another province. Those expenses to move that, you can claim that for a tax deduction as well. Okay, any questions? How about if you ship some boxes from, from like home? The that you came from? Is that uh, deductions? So you are living in Canada now and you're moving some stuff from your home country back to yes. Canada? Yes. So that, I would say that is a moving expense. So you hang on to whatever you paid for to have that done, hang on to that and bring that to either an accountant or when you do your taxes, you say, I have moving expenses. Can I claim that on my taxes? Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, again, I won't get into too much detail about each specific one, but we have a basic personal credit of $11,000. I think we saw that on a slide before. There was a zero to 11,000. That's a basic credit that everyone receives. So think about this. What if for the whole year, you only earned $10,000 in income, okay? Now, as you received your paychecks, I will be certain that your employer is, re is taking taxes off of your paycheck, right? Okay, I would expect them to. But if you only made $10,000 for the year, you should get the taxes that you paid back. Okay, this happens quite often with students or young people that are in school and maybe working at the minimum wage rate and maybe only working a few hours a week or McDonald's or whatever job they have, you know? And if their income isn't past that amount, they would probably get a tax refund every year. Might not be a lot, but whatever taxes they paid from their employer, they should get that back, okay? Um, age credit, that's more like an uh, old age credit. Disability credit, that's, these are the maximum amounts and they're based on your tax rate. Child tax credit is their uh, caregiver. So if we are um, taking care of someone maybe with a, a medical need and we're looking after them and they're living with us in our home, so it might be an elderly parent, it might be a child with a disability, if we're looking after and taking care of them at home, we actually receive a credit for that, okay? Think about this, if they are with us in our home, 
they are not being looked after by who? The government, hospitals, other care facilities. So the government says, if you are looking after them, we will give you a tax benefit or a tax break for that. Um, some medical expenses. There's the ones for students, so education credits. Okay, if you're part-time, you get $120 per month of part-time education. If it's full-time, it's 400. Textbooks can be claimed as well, so those costs for education. If we have to take out a loan for education, while you're in school, you will not have to pay the interest on that student loan. But once you graduate, then the government says, now that you're out of school, you have to pay your interest on that loan. So there's a benefit while you're in school, and then when you graduate, now you have to pay the interest. However, the interest that you pay, you can get a tax deduction for that as well. Okay. Uh, charitable donation, so this could be for a charitable organization, this could be for a church or place of worship, this could be for the Salvation Army, a uh, soup kitchen, any of those things. If you wish to donate money, um, then you get actually a pretty good tax, uh, tax credit for that. And there's more. So even though we talked about all these high taxes, high taxes, high taxes, right? The government likes to keep the taxes where they are and maybe increase them a little bit. Well, what they do is they also offer a lot of ways that you can save. So it becomes a lot of different things that we can receive tax credits for. So we talked about the GST credit. It can range from $139 to $239 four times a year. That's depending on your income level. And I don't know the exact breakdown today. Uh, if we contribute to a political group, so if you're a supporter of the political party in your neighborhood or in your province, uh, you can get a tax credit for that. Uh, public transit. So if we take the bus, okay, what we're talking about here is a monthly bus pass. And it's not just one month. Can I get a tax credit for the one month bus pass? It has to be a, a, a certain number, like three or four months in a row, that you're receiving or that you're using public transportation. Okay. Those monthly bus passes are going to act as your proof or your receipt that you're using public transportation, and you can receive a tax credit for that. It's not for the tickets or cash or anything like that, okay? Okay. Uh, different programs for children. This is an interesting one. So children's fitness programs, sports, um, hockey. Any of our kids play hockey yet? No? No, your kids play hockey from Russia? No? Not yet? Judo. Judo. Very good. So if they take classes for judo or gymnastics or something like that, you can actually get a credit for that. Now, why would the government say we want our kids or we want to encourage by giving tax credits for you to put your kids in sports? Why would they do that? Why is that a good idea? The government says this is a good thing. More sports, more athletes. More sports, more athletes? True. I guess so. Healthy society, productive society. A productive society, okay, that's, that's more along the same lines. If our kids are going to soccer practice or football or whatever after school, what are they not getting involved in, maybe? Violence. Violence, what else? Drugs, crime, right? Kids are active, let's have our kids be active. Also, if they're running around all day, they're healthy. They're not gaining weight. This is a huge expense on Canada as the medical system, right? If we have a lot of sick people in Canada, that's going to put a big strain on the healthcare system, which we all pay for. So if our kids are enrolled in healthy activities, if our kids are enrolled in art, music, things like that, they're not getting into trouble, they're not going to jail, which we pay for as well, okay? So these are good programs, right? Okay, good. All right, child care benefit. We have a universal child care benefit. Uh, it took effect in July of 2006. So it provides all families in Canada with $100 per month, or $1,200 a year, for every child under the age of six. And it's actually taxable in the lower income uh, spouse's name. Okay? So even though it's a benefit from the government, it is a taxable benefit, which means we need to record on our taxes that we receive this government benefit. And then the, we say, thank you, government, and then we pay them back some taxes for it. So it's kind of a, we get some money, and then we pay some taxes on it, too. Okay? Okay. 
Um, I always put this up, so if you need help filing, so to do your very first newcomer tax return, has anyone gone and done this? Has anyone applied for a GST credit or anything like that? Perfect, okay. So one of the places that's actually very close to Manitoba Start is 401 York, and you should all have that in your programs there. Um, I've also printed off of the CRA website. Uh, there are three volunteer free tax centers in Winnipeg, and they run at different times. I'm going to leave this with Melissa and entry programs so that you guys can access this information. I didn't print enough for everyone. Uh, but it'll tell you where you can go and when to do your first newcomer tax return. And you can apply for those uh, benefits right away. Okay? So these places are there to help newcomers, to help low-income families, to help anyone who has trouble with their first tax return and things like that. Okay? We're going to transition a little bit into uh, maybe more specific ways that I would be able to help you specifically um, depending on your situation. So these are um, uh, different ways that we can reduce taxes on things like investment income um, and, and help you guys to save. These are government programs we're going to talk about. So investment income and taxes, how your money grows. So there's three ways that your money generates more money. Okay. If your money is in the savings account at the bank, it's going to generate interest, right? How much interest? A little bit of interest, okay? Probably not enough interest to cover the cost of having a bank account, right? That's just the way it goes. Um, but you have the ability to take that money in and out every day, as many times as you'd like. Uh, dividends. Does anyone know how dividends are paid? Who gets dividends? Shareholders, right. So if we own shares or stock in a company, that company might pay the shareholder a dividend. That's cash to you. So your investment in that company is now generating an income for you. That's a dividend. The last one is capital gain. So we talked about it maybe when you buy property or a house and now that is appreciated in value and you sell it for a higher price. That's a capital gain. It works the same with shares as well. If we buy shares in Google or Microsoft at $10 a share and it goes up to $100 a share, well, we've gained $90 for every share if we sell it at $100. So we pay tax on all of those kinds of income. So again, here's some examples. Interest would be a bank account or a, a GIC is another one. Uh, bonds pay interest. Stocks pay dividends. Um, and capital gains from sale of property or increase in price shares. You just tax differently. My job is to figure out which one helps you pay the least amount of tax. All right. So here's something to think about. When we receive even $1 of interest, no matter where it's from, if it is interest income, 100% of that is taxable. And how much tax you pay on that is based on what your tax rate is. Remember those charts with all the different tax brackets? Depending on where your income falls, that would be your marginal tax rate. And you would pay that on all of the interest income that you generated. If you earned uh, capital gain from the sale of property or shares and things like that, only half of it is taxable. So right away, would you rather receive dividend or capital gain income or interest income? Capital gain. Right. So it could be a dollar of interest, it could be a dollar of... Capital gain. I keep saying it wrong. Capital gain, thank you. Yes? And what happens when this capital gain was generated before becoming a permanent resident? If the capital gain was generated before yeah. you became a permanent resident. So the taxes on that are due at the end of the year in which that capital gain was created, okay? So if you're selling a property or something back home, you get a profit for it, and then you come to Canada. No, before, before coming to Canada. Before coming to Canada. Well, that would have to be based on the tax rules of your country. Did you sell something? Yeah. Before you came? Yeah. So you would, I don't know the rules of your home country and the tax rules there. Yeah, it wasn't taxable. It wasn't taxable. 
Perfect. That's okay. You're off the hook. We say off the hook. You're not, uh, you're not responsible for it. <laughs> not in Canada. If that happened before you came here, yeah. that's not part of Canada tax rules. Okay. Remember the taxes in Canada are based on where you live. So we are all residents of Canada. Then we pay taxes in Canada. If you did things before you were a resident of Canada, that has nothing to do with our taxes. Okay, you're, you, now that you're here, now we're going to tax you. Okay. Uh, dividends use another system. It's not uh, one that I would get into and explain with everyone today, but it is a tax efficient way to receive income. So here's, here's an example that I like to go through. Um, the type of income. So this is an example saying that we receive $5,000 of interest versus 5,000 of dividends or 5,000 of capital gains. If you look over at the end, the net amount, after you've paid taxes, that's what you're actually left with from that 5,000. So does it make a difference if I get interest income or if I get dividend income or capital gains? Yes. Sure it does. It's a big, it's a big difference. So I look at people's situations and I say, oh, we have a, an investment here that's charging you interest. Would you like to put that in a tax-free position? Or would you like to put that in a dividend position where you're gonna uh, save taxes on that income? So those are the kinds of things that I would do. So three different um, accounts, different programs that the government has put in place to help us with saving for our own retirement or saving for our goals. I'm gonna talk about these things. Maybe these are brand new. Maybe you guys have had some experience already with this. The first one I'll talk about is a tax-free savings account or TFSA. Has anyone heard of this already? Okay, you will. Um, okay, the way that this works is the government wants to encourage us to save. Um, saving money is good for the economy. It helps the economy grow. Investing money helps the economy grow. Plus, the government also wants to encourage us to save for our own future and our own retirement. Now, that to me is a kind of a signal why is the government really trying to encourage me to save? Why does the government want to help me plan for my retirement? What, what are they really saying? So what it might say to me is that maybe the government programs like the Canadian Pension Plan may not be enough to support me and my lifestyle when I would like to retire. So when I hear about these government programs that say this is a great way, there's benefits for you to save, we want you guys to save, I listen to that because they're already telling me that I might not have enough for what I want to do in retirement. Okay? Some people like to lie on the beach, some people like to play golf, some people like to garden, it doesn't matter, but your lifestyle, think about how you're going to live in the future and if the government's saying here's a great way to save money, kind of listen for that, right? So the tax-free savings account is a way that you can invest today. This is the why I talk about this one first. You need to be a resident of Canada. Okay, we're all residents of Canada. Yeah. Need to be 18 years or older. Check. Okay. Um, and that's, that's it. You need to have a social insurance number. Does anyone, yeah? We should all have that, right? Okay, so everyone's available to do this. <coughs> what the government says is every year we're going to give you some room. We're going to give you a, an empty bucket that you can invest some money. And that amount right now is 5500 So every year they make that bucket bigger. They give you another 5500 Now it's just empty space until you decide this is where you want to invest and save money. Remember we talked about all the ways that investments get taxed? Zero dollars get taxed if it is in this tax-free savings account. So if you're planning to save and invest, why not put it in a place where you will never pay the tax on that investment growth? If it's shares in a company, it doesn't matter. If it's a uh, capital gain or a dividend or interest income, doesn't matter. If it's in the tax-free account, you'll never pay tax on that money, no matter how much it grows, okay? Uh, income is earned tax-free. When you take the money out, it's tax-free. An unused room, so maybe this year we can't do any contributions. We can't save this year, that's okay. Next year, you'll have another 5,500, so you can play catch up with yourself, okay? You can walk into most financial institutions and say, I'd like to open up a tax-free savings account, and they will get that account open for you, lickety-split. 
Okay, no, no questions asked. Well, a couple of questions asked. Uh, but it's very easy to open that account. Um, but again, if, if you needed the financial advice or the planning, then it's, then I would say a place like Investors Group or another financial planning company would help you with those decisions and those plans, okay? So is it like, let's say your annual salary is 40,000, you put in 5,500 on that DFSA. So your taxes, you're going to pay for the 40,000 or? Good question. The question was if you're making $40,000 of income and you put $5,000 or $5,500 in your tax-free savings account, do you get taxed on the $40,000 total? The answer is yes. I'm going to confuse you in a few minutes by talking about a different way, but in the tax-free savings account, the, in, the uh, investment growth is not taxed. You do not receive a tax deduction because you put money in there. Okay, so just be, the, the money that goes in there has already been taxed once. You've already paid the tax on it. So we're not going to uh, give you a benef uh, tax benefit back. Is that clear? Hopefully? Okay. It's a great question. Uh, you might be thinking of a different account here, which I'll talk about in a second. All right. So parents, moms and dads, if we have a goal for our children to go to university or college, this is a fantastic way that you can receive free government money to help your savings grow for their education. There are some rules. The child must be enrolled in university or college uh, or full-time or something like that in order to receive the government money. So let's talk about how this works. When an RESP or uh, Registered Education Savings Plan is created or opened, when you put some money into that account for the kid's education, you will receive from the government $500 into that account for the child when they go to school. Now, if your child is very young, like my little boy, we can start that account today and that money will grow over time. Not only what we put in, but the amount that the government put in. So both of those amounts are going to be growing for us. Okay? They're also going to give you 20% on every dollar you put in up to, a, um, up to a maximum amount of $500. So if you put in $2,500 in one year, you'd get 20% from the government on that money, which is an extra $500. Okay? And there's some benefits as well. If you are a low-income family, you can get an additional amount of money for that. So here's one example. Let's say you contribute $50 every month. You say, this is what we're going to budget for. This is what we can afford. $50 every month, that's $600 a year for your child's education. You're going to receive the Canada Learning Bond for $500 in year one. That's a one-time free amount of money. You're also going to get 20% on the $600 that you put in. So that's another $120. At the end of year one, your total in your account would be $1,220. Okay, that's just after the first year. Now, the idea is that this is not just sitting as cash in a bank account earning 0% interest. Okay, I would recommend that we have an investment, that this grows, that we have a number of years for this to grow for our children's education. Education costs are going to get more and more and more expensive. You need that money to be growing for the education. Okay, any questions about this? Perfect. Um, so the money, yeah, the money can be used for all kinds of things. As long as your child is in school, they can use that money for whatever they like. You are in control of the account as the parents, and then you can give that money out to the kids once they're in school. What if the children don't go to school? Thanks, mom and dad. Thanks for all the money you gave us, but uh, I got a job, so I'm going to go to work. I don't want to go to school. So you have the choice. Mom and dad have the choice of what to do with that money. <coughs> They can take that money out, pay all of the government money back to them, and then get taxed on all the money that they took out. Is that a good idea? And then be broke. They wouldn't be broke. They just wouldn't have as much as they had first thought for saving. Yeah. So that might not be the best idea. There's another idea that the government says, well, if your child does not go to school and you have all this money in this education plan, 
we will let you move that money from the education plan to a retirement savings plan and that way you don't have to pay the taxes on it okay so mom dad I don't want to go to school you say that's okay son I'm gonna retire five years earlier because you decided you didn't want to go to school because now I have more money in my retirement fund right so thanks everyone for the uh, time and presentation and